Okay, this is part of a series. I recommend you watch the first video in this series, which is on unlocking the bootloader on the Moto G uh, and should apply to a lot of uh, phones out there. But once you have your bootloader unlocked, uh, you can now start changing and modifying your boot uh, partition or your recovery partition or your system partition. Today we're going to be looking at um, booting our own uh, recovery partition. So we need an image to boot. You can create, you can compile your own or you can get one pre-made. Uh, what I'm going to do today is we're going to take one that's already made and modify it a little bit. And um, options out there are um, uh, twerp or the team win recovery and uh, then there's also clockwork mod. Uh, we're gonna be looking at the twerp today So let's go and I googled Moto G uh, TWRP uh, you can see the first two links that come up here. Uh, this one says uh, 2013 which is the first generation. I have a second generation of the Moto G uh, which is the 2014 so I'll click on that come down here to the download image to select the latest image here are some images you can choose. Again, um, be sure when you're getting an image that someone else made that you trust it. So we're putting some faith into this project here right now because when you boot this image, it can do whatever it wants to its phone, to your phone. So we'll go ahead and click to download that. I've already downloaded it and I've copied it to my working directory here and uh, renamed it uh, just TWRP. Dot IMG. Now we want to make sure whether we create an image or get an image somewhere that it really is a boot image and there's uh, two ways to do that. You can type in file. File is a command um, that will tell you what type of a file any file is that it knows of. So we'll go ahead and it will check the header of that file. So file, the name of the image and you can see right here it says that this is a, an Android uh, boot image. It contains a kernel, a RAM disk and even shows us some of the uh, command line for the kernel there. Uh, if for some reason you don't have file on your system, which I think is on pretty much every <laughs> Linux system, we are going to, you could also check it with, um, if we type out the head command, which by default shows the first 10 lines of a file, we're going to say dash n1 to say just look at the first line of this file and then the name of the file. Now this is a compiled binary file, so if we run this you can see right away that this it says Android and it even it shows us some of the similar information. We do have some of the um, binary data here that isn't important to us. So what we could do if we wanted to clean that up a little bit is run the strings command on that and then also pipe that into head dash n and we'll say two for the first two lines. And those will only show us uh, ASCII characters, plain text characters. And right there you can see the information. Android and you can see uh, some of the um, boot information for the kernel there. Okay, so we've confirmed that this is a bootable image for Android. So let's go ahead and boot it. Now you could use, oh and by the way I've mentioned this in the last tutorial, uh, you'll want to install these three tools, uh, the fast boot tools, the uh, ADB tools, and uh, a boot IMG. And as I've mentioned, Fastboot works with the bootloader. ADB is the Android debugging bridge, which allows you to log into the phone through USB or Wi Fi if you set it up that way. Uh, and then the A boot IMG allows you to extract images like the one we have right now, modify it, and then recompile it into a bootable image. So install those using your package manager. Here's the command if you're using Aptitude on a Debian based system. Uh, let's clear that out. So now that we have the image, we have those files installed, uh, let's go ahead and use Fastboot to, um, to boot that image. And we could use the flash command to flash it, which will actually modify the hard drive on our phone. It will flash the recovery. But another option, a little bit safer of an option, especially to test it out before you flash it, is the boot option. So we use sudo just to make sure we have the correct permissions to access the device. The fast boot is the program. We're saying we want to boot and then what image we want to boot from. And we'll say this and I'll hit enter. It's downloading that to the phone. It's booting it. And if you look at the screen here, you can see the um, Motorola logo. And now you see the team win and we're in the re custom recovery here for twerp. Um, and so we booted it 
without installing it to the phone. Right now it's running from RAM. Think of this as booting like a live CD on a desktop or laptop. You have a Linux live CD, you put it in, it boots, but it doesn't necessarily affect the hard drive on the phone. And you can see all the options there that's for backing stuff up. At this point, you probably do want to make some backups for, for later on recovering in case you mess stuff up. So what we're, we can do here is do it on the phone. We can also at this point sudo adb shell and now I have a root shell on that phone in the custom recovery. I can list out the files on the phone and it's, it's just a Linux shell so with root access so you can run whatever programs you want on here. Uh, we can type in mount and you can see what's mounted by default. You can see it mounted one of the SD cards. Uh, the cache from the phone, uh, the internal SD card memory, uh, and where it's mounted, all that stuff. And we're going to be looking into this a little bit more later on, but let's go ahead and modify that image and boot it again. So let's exit out of here. And for right now, I'm going to run our fast boot uh, bootloader. So we're going to say sudo adb reboot bootloader and what that's going to do is going to reboot the phone back to the bootloader which is where we started today. I showed you that in the last tutorial. So once we're back there now again if I list out here the only file I have in this directory is our recovery image. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to want to extract that image so I can make differences, uh, differences changes to it. So I'm going to make a directory I'll call it boot I'll move into the boot directory and then I'm going to use the uh, aboot img program to extract so dash x for extract and I'm going to say dot dot backslash and our twerp image so that's saying look at the uh, directory above this directory and extract this image. I'll hit enter and it says writing boot image configuration so it's creating a config file for you which we're going to modify in later tutorials it's going to extract the kernel image and the RAM disk image. We can list out and see all three of those files. We can also see you know, how big they are. Uh, so the init RD is the initial RAM disk. So when you boot an image, it loads the kernel and initial RAM disk, which is a very lightweight, usually a very lightweight um, file system with the tools that the kernel is going to use. So that's what we want to modify here is the initial RAM disk. So let's make another directory, call it, we'll call it RAM disk. And then we will move into that directory and now we want to extract that RAM disk image. And I've gone over this in previous tutorials outside of this series, uh, but we're going to use uh, gunzip dash c because it's a compressed file dot dot backslash and remember the dot dot backslash just means look at the directory above this directory this is where that image is and we're going to extract it but we're also going to pipe it into cpio dash i and we'll hit enter and if we list out now we have the file system it looks like you know a very lightweight linux file system which is what it is so now we can make changes to anything on here uh, we can uh, change the initial uh, the init rc which is a script that runs at boot time. We can go and add files to uh, the SBIN so we can have other programs on there. And so let's go ahead and open this up in a file browser and look around and you have this one called RES which normally stands for resources. Let's go and that's not normal on a Linux system. Let's go in there. Oh, oh look it's got some twerp stuff. The twerp uh, XML. Uh, we can click on that and um, it opens it up. Uh, I'll try to open it up in a web browser. Let me close that and actually go back to my shell here. We'll move into that directory RS, RES and I will cat out the um, UI. And you can see it's an XML file um, that is the recovery. So when we went to the recovery and it showed all those buttons and Im images, this is the setup for that on how that looked. Let's go back into here and we see, oh, fonts and images. That can be interesting. We'll go in there and Look at this, we got a bunch of images that we can modify. Look, here's this one called curtain.jpg. Uh, we'll double click on that. And we know that that's the main screen that we see when it boots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open that. I'm gonna use GIMP. And I'm just gonna go in here, I'm gonna to go to hue and saturation, and I'll change the hue so that it's red. I'll save it, 
back to that same file, export it, close out of GIMP, and you can see that it's been updated here. It's now red. So now we've made a change. You can make lots of changes. I just changed one image. Let's go ahead and recompress our image. So I'm in the RAM disk folder here with all our, our information. Again, if I list out the file uh, directory above us, you can see the initial RAM disk and, and the kernel still there. Let's create a new RAM disk. I'm not going to overwrite the old one. I'm going to create a new one. And if you try to overwrite it, you're going to want to delete. But if I try to go directly back to this IMG file, it won't work. It won't allow me to write to it. We're going to want to delete it first. But I'll just create a new file with a new name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do aboot IMG, same program we used to extract it. But we're going to do dash pack uh, init RD for our, for our initial RAM disk. We're going to go to the directory above us, and I'll just call it, sorry about that, camera recording the phone, the battery, or the, the card got full. I also realized that um, it booted back into the regular system. So let's go ahead and boot into the bootloader again on that. And now we're back to what we're doing. Sorry about that. Okay, so what we were doing was we were using a boot IMG pack initial RAM disk. We're going to put it in the directory above us. I will call it new IMG. And what directory is all our RAM disk data in? It's the current directory, so we'll just do dot slash. We'll hit enter. No error output. That means that things are good. We'll go up a directory, we'll list, and you can see we have a new IMG. And if we list out with the sizes, you can see it's it's the same size because we didn't really change anything, uh, minor changes. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and recreate our, our boot image. So we recreate our initial RAM disk image, which was part of our boot image. So we're gonna use a boot IMG again. We're gonna say dash dash create, and we'll again create the directory above us. I'll call it boot2.img, you can call it whatever you want. We're going to say dash f, and we're going to say boot uh, config, uh, image config, that's the config file right here. We didn't make any changes to it, but it's holding the settings for our image. What kernel do we want to, to uh, repackage? We haven't made any changes, so we're going to use the same kernel. And then dash r, we're going to use our new initial RAM disk, init, uh, init rd, new img. And there we go, seems successful. We'll go back up one directory. And if we list out, you can see we now have, well, our boot folder, our new boot image and our twerp image. And if we file boot two, you can see that it says that it's a Android boot image with a kernel and a RAM disk. So far, everything seems good. Let's try booting that image. So our phone is at our bootloader and we will now say, um, sudo fast boot and we're going to boot our boot to image and now when it goes into the recovery it's booting that image we modified so instead of a blue screen at startup we should get a red screen there we go so that is how you can make changes we change just images but you can also change um you know what happens what scripts run what programs are installed uh, for the recovery image here. And the great thing about this is that we can do this with Android images such as the boot image, not just the recovery image, which is something we're going to be doing in the future. As always, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Maybe a little advanced, uh, but pretty straightforward. I'll try to remember to put a link to the notes of exactly everything we just did um, in the description of this video. So go ahead and check that out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to FilmsByChris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. 
I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.